Okay, should be a fun video. Trump surrogate power rankings from 10 to 1. This is only going to include their capacity in media. So we're not going to include things like how much potentially they're helping out getting people registered to vote, for example. So many people like Charlie Kirk and Laura Trump would be higher up, but this is just media. So starting off, number 10, Tulsi Gabbard. I think she's great at media. She's great on um, she's great on interviews. She's doing lots of stuff with Bobby Kennedy Jr. I think that team has been helpful for Trump. Former Democrats I think it's a good story. And I think just the fact that Tulsi Gabbard is vocal supporting Trump, I think helps um, to win over some independent voters. Number nine, David Sachs, potentially controversial on this list, if you're not that familiar with him, he does all in podcast and he's a Silicon Valley guy. I think he's a very important voice for Trump because it's a different angle. There's a lot of people that are just traditionally conservative kind of media people. Like for example, maybe Tim pool, um, or people like that, whatever, all the people on Fox, David Sachs is kind of represents Silicon Valley. And I think in a lot of ways I'm speculating, he's kind of made it more, um, palatable and more socially acceptable for so for Silicon Valley. And lots of those people, have very deep pockets for them to support Trump. So, and if you watch him on All In Podcast, he lays out the case for Trump. Great, I think. So I recommend All In Podcast. Number eight, Sean Hannity. Um, arguably, Sean Hannity's influence has dropped a little bit in recent years, but I don't think too much. And I'm going to include him still. He has a very popular show on Fox. And I do think he um, kind of appeals to like a, an age bracket older than me, more of the boomer, the boomer age bracket, which is obviously very important. And votes in high numbers so i think sean Hannity definitely deserves a spot on this list number seven this is probably a surprise maybe melania trump and i say this because there's some speculation of oh is she really that into this she doesn't seem to be doing that much media maybe she's like not she's a little bit annoyed that she just still has to live this lifestyle i think recently she's done a few strong interviews said very nice things about donald trump uh had some strong words following the the trump assassination attempt i think Overall, her media appearances have been very good late, lately, even though she came out with a different position on Trump than abortion. Some people are saying that that's actually 4D chess and she's kind of trying to appeal to like a different slice of potential Trump voters. Um, I mean, I don't know. I just heard that online. But overall, I think she actually has a few recent good interviews that help Trump and just show him kind of as a family man and that his family is uh, is strong right now. Uh, number six, Megyn Kelly. And I think this is very interesting. I think I could do a whole kind of video on the research of Megyn Kelly. She was so popular in 2016. She got went to NBC after all the bad things that happened at Fox. Went to NBC, essentially fell off. Like, I didn't hear about Megyn Kelly for probably five years. I wasn't following the news that much, but I didn't hear about her at all. Now she's back independent. That Megyn Kelly show, I believe it's called, on YouTube. It does numbers. She has amazing guests on. And I think she's as charismatic and good at her job as ever. And I just think right now, I've never probably watched more Megyn Kelly than right now. Even in 2016, I wasn't that into it. Um, just, I think she's doing a great job and the comeback story is incredible. Number five, Vivek Ramaswamy came onto the scene in politics just this year. And he's incredible at media. He just did a debate with John Bolton, kind of debating foreign policy, kind of like the isolationist versus the interventionist type thing. I mean, that's oversimplified, but he did a phenomenal job in that debate, I thought, because he's just willing to talk to anybody. He's willing to have discussions with really whoever. He had Mark Cuban on. He can disagree with someone. I think why Vivek is such a skilled communicator. He can disagree strongly with somebody without being a jerk. So many people, especially on the left, like the leftist streamer world, the people like Hassan Piker and a few others I don't even want to mention in name because I dislike them so much. They're so um, juvenile and they're so cutthroat in the way they debate. It's so like, ter it turns me off. It's just disgusting. They just want to go for gotchas constantly. I mean, I, they probably learned that in large part to just the way the media climate has been in the last 10, 15 years. But I think Vivek can disagree strongly with somebody without just being like, without trying to dunk on them. Number four, Tucker Carlson. Um, he has not really been in the news that much lately, like in terms of breaking news, but he's very high in the, in the podcast chart. Sometimes he's even above Joe Rogan that kind of flips back and forth. He's going around on a tour. Like it kind of looks like he's almost running for president. I mean, he's not, but he's, he's has his tour right now where he's going on to all these different American cities, gives talks. He has a bunch of guests that come on. And I think Tucker Carlson just still a giant in the world of media. And he's 
certainly a pro-Trump figure, more way more than you would be a cr critic of Trump. I mean, he's generally pro-Trump for sure. Now, top three I'm going to do right now because I think the top three could actually be interchangeable. This is probably going to be perhaps some disagreement, but I think the top three is actually very close. Before I do top three, I'm going to do honorable mentions. I have Pierce Morgan, Charlie Kirk, Tim Poole, Sky News Australia, Jordan Peterson, Dana White, and perhaps a few others I'm forgetting, but um, for one reason or another, I chose not to keep put those people on the list. I know Sky News Australia is one kind of company, but it's kind of surprising how much pro-Trump, and that, that they're just doing good as like an organization. But number three is going to be J.D. Vance. And again, he could probably be higher, but he's been great lately. I think he's actually been phenomenal lately in his inter in his interviews. All the kind of campaign events he does, he always takes questions for the most part and gives great answers. I think he started off a little shaky. Maybe he looked a little bit nervous at the very beginning, but Trump let, just let him keep going. Trump did not seem to kind of put him in like the basement like they've seemed to have done with Tim Walls. Um, I think J.D. Vance has actually done phenomenal. He's, his stock is only going up. Like if he was a, like a stock on the stock market, he should be consistently rising. And then that debate was a complete masterclass. The best debate performance I've actually ever seen in that format, where it's a one-on-one -on -one format in a presidential setting or a vice presidential setting. I've never seen a stronger performance in that. So I think J.D. Vance rightfully deserves his place in the top three. Number two, this is a very important person for Donald Trump, in my opinion. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Make America Healthy Again with Nicole Shanahan. And similar to Tulsi, he gives the Democrats or the independents sort of more social license to like Donald Trump. He can uh, sell Donald Trump to different people that perhaps would just never listen to Donald Trump. And I really like his, his um, emphasis on Make America Healthy Again, getting rid of chronic disease, trying to get America to eat better, have better nutrition, um, and just to, he has the, the name Kennedy. I mean, he has so much pedigree. And number one is Elon Musk. I don't know if this is that surprising based on the fact that he's the richest person in the world. I mean, I haven't checked right now, but I think he is one number one right now. But if he's not number one, he's right there. I just haven't looked at the list recently. Um, he owns Twitter. Or he's like a huge part of owning Twitter, whatever it, it, whatever it is. But um, And then he's got like over 200 million followers on Twitter. Basically, everything he says gets amplified so much and he's been so strongly pro-Trump. He was just at Trump's Butler rally, went on stage. It was a great moment. And he basically just, if you watch his like X page ever lately, it's constantly pro-Trump stuff. He's donating a bunch of money to a, a, a pro-America pack that uh, I don't know exactly how much it's for Trump, but I'm sure the pack would be not for Kamala just based on how much Elon Musk publicly um, promotes Donald Trump messages all the time at least like in the last few months, basically since the first assassination attempt, right after that, Elon Musk endorsed Trump and they did that massive X spaces together, huge space, Donald Trump and Elon Musk. Um, I hope just for entertainment purposes, they do another one before the election because it was fun to listen to. Um, but yeah, with that said, that's the list. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm sure there's tons of disagreement and that's great. Let me know who I missed. Let me know who should be above. And again, I'm basing this on media influence to Trump. So how much basically they help Donald Trump from a media standpoint. And again, please let me know in the comments where your disagreements are. Hopefully we can have a fun discussion. Um, but other than that, thank you for watching this video. Have a great day.